I'm Kendra Little from Red Gates Advocate Team. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a deployment in Azure DevOps to deploy using SQL change automation to an Azure SQL database. Now, I have a fake production database. This isn't real production data set up on an Azure a DevOps instance here. And I have already got my development database, which is named Azure Demo, into source control. And I've already set up a continuous integration pipeline that runs a build for that. So now I want to deploy my code to my production database, because what we're doing here is simulating, hey, I have an existing production database in Azure SQL database, and I want to get it into source using SQL change automation, and I do want to be able to deploy to that. So how do we do this? Here in Azure DevOps, when I go to pipelines, here is the pipeline that I have set up for my um, continuous integration. And this is configured to run in a pull request workflow, but also to run when, you know, when a continuous integration way, when I merge my pull request into master. So it has been successful here, but I want to create a release pipeline to deploy from that build artifact when things have been merged into master, or perhaps, you know, I could do this in a variety of ways. I could, I could deploy from master, or I could say, um, I want to regularly merge things into master and I want to create deployments based on release branches when release branches are created, all depending on how I want to manage this, what my branch, my preferred branching strategy is and the frequency that I want to release. So I'm going to create a new pipeline here in my releases. And I need to tell it, um, how do I want to create this? I'm going to say, I'm going to start with an empty job. And I need to tell it, well, what is the, what am I deploying? So over here on the left, I'm going to click on add an artifact. And I need to tell it, okay, this, what project am I deploying from? And then what is the build pipeline I'm deploying from? So I'm going to tell it I am deploying from Azure Demo. And I do want to deploy the latest build from that pipeline. So I'm going to click add there and that sets this up. Now, if I do want to do continuous deployment, I could enable the trigger there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it blank for now and manually run this. So let's get that window to go away there. X out because you can always uh, set that up later. So in stage one, I am going to click on agent job here and select the agent pool I want to use. In my case, I want to go ahead and use a private pool. Um, as I discussed before, I like to run private pools just because I find a lot of customers do private pools. So it kind of mimics that workflow. And now I need to add in some tasks. So I'm going to click the plus button here and type REDG to get my Redgate SQL change automation tasks there. And I am going to click add on the release task here. There are a couple of different operations you can do with this. And the two that we are going to use today, we are going to first create a release artifact, and then we are going to deploy changes from a release artifact. This is really what you want. This is the modern workflow and other things are here for backwards compatibility. What the database release artifact does is it looks at our target database and checks out, hey, what migrations have already been deployed to you? Have, have you ever had any deployments? Are you an empty database, right? If you're an empty database and you've never had any deployments, I probably want to lay down the baseline script if I have one. But if you're not an empty database, I don't want to deploy the baseline script, right? Then I need to, it, it will create some, uh, once I actually do the deployment, you know, it will create some objects. When you do your first deployment, this is not a great example of circling here, right? Once you do the first deployment, it'll create a couple of tables in a view that help it track, hey, what migrations have been deployed to this database so that it doesn't rerun things that shouldn't be rerun. But when it first creates the release artifact, all the release artifact will do is say, what's going on in the target database and what does it look like I should do so that if you want to have someone review that release artifact as part of a change management process, you can do that, right? You could create a release artifact in one stage and have a manual approval step or gating between stages in your pipeline if you wanted. Uh, so generally, you do want to create a release artifact. Even if you don't want that gating stage, I think release artifacts are a great way to look back and say, hey, what did we deploy, right? Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I would encourage you to do the release artifacts no matter what. They also have a report in them about static code analysis, which is super handy. What is the build artifact we want to deploy? So I want to choose this folder that contains the database build artifact here and click OK. And then if I would like to, if I, and I would encourage you to do this for simplicity, I'm just going to leave this blank, which the blank, let's hover here, the blank um, is just going to let it automatically determine it. But if you had something like a highly available file share, you wanted to save these two, that could be really, really nice. Um, it could be cloud hosted or hosted however you want so that you did keep a historical record of these over time. Uh, looking down at the options here, let's scroll on down. I need to tell it where do I want to deploy to. So my target SQL Server instance is it, this. It's an Azure SQL database. So I'm going to right click here just to copy it to my clipboard and say uh, connect just so I can get that address here. And I don't have to retype it. I can pop that into the UI here. And then the database name that I want to deploy to is Azure Demo Deploy. Deploy. There. Probably should have copied that to the clipboard too. Now my username here, I could do a variable for my username as well. I'm going to go ahead and populate my username here. But then I need to give it my password. Now the UI on the releases uh, is a little different than the UI on the build pipelines. There's no sort of tab at the top right here for variables, but they are right, they are here on the pipeline in sort of the middle of this pane at the top. And I can click add a variable once I go to that. So I'm going to add a variable that I'm going to name PW. I'm going to click the little box that says, please do keep my password secret. And I am going to now put my password in, which remains the series of dots. And that joke, I never get tired of making that joke, but it's still not funny. It wasn't funny the first time I did it, and I'm sure it isn't funny now. But now that I've set up a variable, I can put my variable here into the password there and not expose my variable in my actual password in videos on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, now I've created the release artifact. But also, I want to show you deploying the release artifact. So I'm going to say clone tasks. And again, I could have this in a separate stage. I'm just putting this all into stage one of my pipeline. But you can spread this out however you like. And I'm going to change the task on this to deploy changes from a release artifact. And I'll just change the deploy name, the display name to deploy. I've got the same deployment resources path there, and it did copy over the information about the target SQL Server instance, so I don't have to retype that. Go ahead and click Save on my pipeline. And I do this all the time. I've just named it New Release Pipeline. Let's say call this Deploy to Azure SQL Database, and we'll save that there. And let's go ahead and create a release from that. So this is creating a release poetically named release one, right? That's the default name there. And so it's going to first connect to that, um, the database. It will, first it will download the artifact, right? We have to get our build artifact first. So we're getting our build artifact here and then we are creating a release artifact. When we, you know, what is the state of this target database? Now, this is simulating a production database, which has not had any deployments happen to it yet. So it is uh, connecting to the database and saying, what do you look like? And what migrations do we have to deploy that have or have not? You know, it has to figure out what has been deployed to this. Now, I'm actually going to click refresh on this screen because I don't know if it's superstition or reality, but sometimes the screen uh, doesn't automatically update on me. And let's actually um, take a look at this. With the release artifact, while it's on the create release artifact table, it won't actually do anything to this. But um, the thing that I don't see here, part of the way you can know, have I ever deployed to this database with SQL change automation, is the tables it tracks deployment in have underscores in the name. So they pop to the top of the DBO schema. And those tables are not there yet. So we haven't actually done a deployment to this yet. But our agent, I am running everything on a single virtual machine. So our agent is still connecting to the SQL database and figuring out um, what to do. So I have everything running on. There we go. We're making some, we've created the release artifact now. 
And now it's actually going into and deploying the release artifact as well. So we can see when we look at the release artifact, there is, this is just the logs, by the way, there is a human readable artifact you can look at. But in the logs as well, we can see that there is a migration script and there is one migration pending deployments. So what we can see about the database is that also, this is the way to interpret this, mark as deployed. If the target database is not empty and it has tables in it, SQL change automation will be like, oh, I can't deploy the baseline to you. I have, you know, you haven't had a deployment yet, but you have tables in you. So the baseline script represents production when you're getting started, right? So mark is deployed means it's not going to deploy that baseline script, is going to simply record it as, yeah, we, this database had stuff in it and it, the baseline script has already been applied to it. We then had one change which will be deployed, which is the adding last modified date to misspelled uh, doggos table dot SQL script that I checked in. I did that with a pull request and then merged it into master after I created that baseline. So you can see what it's going to do from the logs. You can see a summary and then the release artifact has a more rich statement. Here is the logs for the deployment itself. And we can see in the logs for the deployment itself that it did set up those tables. See how they have the underscores as the names. You can customize, by the way, if you don't want these in the DBO schema, you can customize. There's a property setting on the SQL project where you can change that. So if you want to have multiple projects deploying to a database and they all need to have their own tables where they record um, the migration log table, these actually, I was pointing to extended properties here. The tables are actually the migration log um, uh, table and related views there. But um, here's just a quick summary. It actually executed that single migration script, but it marked the baseline as deployed. So now if we go and we look at our Azure SQL database, and just for funsies, while I'm looking at it, I'm going to go ahead and say on my releases, I'm going to say create another release. Because in the second release, I haven't added any more changes. In the second release, it should just be like, I don't have anything to do, but we're gonna just validate that that works, right? Mm -hmm. So I can now refresh in SQL Server Management Studio, my, uh, come on, connect, it's connecting up to Azure. Come on, SSMS, there we go. And refresh the tables. And now we can see here is that migration log table. And uh, it also uses the schema snapshot table to track migrations. In addition, I have a view named migration log current. We can actually select from this migration log table if we'd like to. So let's do a new query window in Management Studio. And it's getting all connected to the Azure SQL database with my authentication now. And we can do select star from dbo dot underscore underscore migration. There we go, capital M for migration there. Log, there we go. Typing is not my strong suit. But if I inspect the migration log table, and what have I done there? It's two underscores, it's not one underscore. And uh, it's trying to tell me that I didn't do that right. There we go. That's two underscores, not one. One underscore wasn't enough. We can see for the migrations that are applied, there's a migration ID. This ID is at the top of each individual migration script in a column, right? So this is actually what it uses to check has that been deployed. There's also a script checksum. So this is actually really nice. If someone accidentally changes a migration script, but it's already been deployed, like migration scripts, unless it's a pre-deployment script or a post-deployment script, if it is you know, not in a pre-deployment or post-deployment script folder, it will be run only once. So it'll take the checksum of the script and compare it against the checksum of migrations that have already been run. So it can alert you, hey, um, someone changed this after it was deployed. Did you mean to create a new migration? We can then see, hey, this baseline, we checked it on this date, but it wasn't deployed, right? Because it wasn't an empty database. If we wanted to deploy to an empty database for something like a build or creating a new environment, we could, um, and it would actually deploy that to an empty database. This incremental migration script, script, the script with this name in this folder, was deployed to this database. So if we want to review on this given database, hey, what's been done in there, we can at any time. Release number two 
has now been completed. And, you know, this is just, it looked, it didn't actually have any new changes in there. We ran it for the same build, but in this case, we can see on perform create, let's look at what it looks like when it doesn't do anything. It says, hey, there's no migrations pending deployment. We're going to check for drift analysis and do all that kind of thing. But in fact, there was nothing for us to do. So if things accidentally get triggered, but you don't actually have anything in there, yes, it is smart enough to not do anything to the database. And you can see that, of course, in the logs as well. So in our deployment log as well, it's saying, um, I'm going to you know, make sure this is in the expected state. I am going to, you know, clean up my tables, but really all I need to run, if you do have pre or post deployment scripts, um, these are set, uh, when you put something in a pre or post deployment script, which is a good time to talk about those, if I go back into SQL change automation, in my migrations tab, I have the ability to add pre and post scripts here. Um, if there's things you want to run on every deployment, you can run things before the deployment begins or after the deployment ends. You can also add additional files, right? If you want an O2 that does some check or makes some change and you want to run it every single time, you can put it in there, similarly with post-deployment. Since those are set to run on every single deployment, right, this deployment um, will still run those even if there's no incremental migration to be run. Of course, you always want your pre- and post-deployment scripts by nature to be rerunnable because they will be rerun at the beginning and end of every uh, deployment. So you have some scripts that'll be run at the beginning and end of every deployment. And then the scripts that will be run just once per deployment are the scripts that you create as uh, migration changes. Those will only ever be run once, not once per deployment, just once against each target database. So that is how we can set up a release pipeline of course, right now, this is set up to be manually triggered, but we can edit our pipeline to be triggered either every, you know, for continuous de deployment every time something gets checked into master, or we can set that trigger to have a branch filter and say, oh, oh, just automatically trigger this when a new branch is created uh, with a name like this. We can also add stages to that if we want things to go to QA environments before they go to production. We can configure this with many stages. We can work all sorts of magic with it, but this is how to get started. Thanks for joining me for this video on how to set up a deployment pipeline for Azure SQL Database in Azure DevOps. I'm Kendra Little from Redgate. Bye, folks.